welcome students to a completely new video on a different module of the syllabus since we have already discussed the different respiratory disorders i think now that it's high time that we should move on not from only the knowledge of disease but also to the knowledge of the methods of diagnosis of disease with that the first diagnostic measure that I bring to you today is bronchoscopy. There are many things to know about bronchoscopy. First is that it is used to diagnose the lungs. Of this video, there are five points of bronchoscopy that I have particularly chosen. As you can see on the screen, definition, then the indication, risk, preparation and procedure. I don't think that I need to explain each of these five terms separately. At the end of the video, I shall give you the brief list of the other topics of bronchoscopy that one must know in order to complete his or her knowledge. Now I come to the explanation of the five terms that you can see on the screen. Indication means those situations, those medical situations where bronchoscopy can be applied. Risk means those factors which must be avoided during the performance of bronchoscopy. Preparation means the additional arrangements that must be taken before beginning the actual procedure of bronchoscopy. And finally, procedure is the execution of the methods of bronchoscopy. Coming to the definition. Definition of bronchoscopy is that it is an endoscopic medical procedure that is used to look inside the airways, that is the bronchi and the lungs. Endoscopic means you get inside your organs exactly students in this process we get directly inside into the organs that you're all having we get into our lungs we get into our airways the question is why do we get into these vital organs of our body two purposes one is for the diagnosis another is for therapy. Few diagnostic indications that I have listed here is obviously the first one, the lung disease. If there is a presence of tumor in any part of the respiratory system, we might have to go for a bronchoscopy. Chronic cough that is unexplained need bronchoscopy to be performed so as to find the reason for the cough. And if there be an infection that is evident from other diagnostic tools, that needs to be confirmed with the help of bronchoscopy. From the therapeutic point, we have the purpose of removing the fluid or mucus out of the airways. If any foreign body, body enters the respiratory tract, that also needs to be removed. Sometimes we need to dilate an airway that is either blocked or narrowed. Or it may also be necessary to clean the airways, that is to wash the airways. So after knowing the indications for bronchoscopy, we move to identifying the risks that are present in the performance of bronchoscopy. Here is a very short list of the risk. First obviously is bleeding. See, if I'm inserting an instrument into the respiratory system, it might happen that unintentionally I'm hurting some structures, I'm injuring some structures, causing bleeding. If the instrument is not properly sterilized, then there is a risk that the respiratory system would suffer an infection. If I am pushing the instrument through the respiratory wall, then there is a chance that there will be a bronchial perforation that means a hole can be created 
in the wall of the respiratory system. Insertion of a foreign instrument can cause irritation and the response to that irritation would be the spasmodic contractions of the smooth bronchial muscles, technically termed as bronchospasm. As the instrument goes through the voice box down to the trachea and the carina, it passes through the organ called the vocal cords, the voice box, which technically is known as larynx, which also contains a group of smooth muscles. Contractions of the smooth muscles can cause something that is medically termed as laryngospasm. And finally, air that is in the space between the lung covering, it can cause the lung to collapse, something that in medicine we call it as pneumothorax. So how do we prepare a patient for bronchoscopy? Few points I have enlisted here while a patient for a bronchoscopy will be prepared. First is, in order to minimize the discomfort of the patient, a local anesthetic spray is applied to your nose and throat during a bronchoscopy. Next, in order to relieve the patient and in order to help patient relax, a sedative kind of drug that means something that can bring down the anxiety of the patient. So during the bronchoscopy procedure, the patient though will remain awake but will feel drowsy during the entire procedure. Now insertion of a foreign material or an instrument into the respiratory system do have a chance that it will reduce the oxygen level of the blood. So. During the performance of a bronchoscopy, oxygen is usually given. But general anesthesia is rarely needed, mostly it's not needed. But if we are performing any kind of rigid bronchoscopy, then general anesthesia is a common prescription. And from the patient's point of view, he or she needs to avoid eating or drinking anything for at least 6 to 12 hours before the performance of bronchoscopy. Even before the performance of the procedure, the doctor needs to be informed of the drugs that the patient is consuming. Few drugs I have named here, aspirin, ibuprofen, warfarin, or any other drugs that can cause the thinning of blood. These drugs need to be reported to the bronchoscopist as well as the pulmonologist who is in charge of the patient. We have seen how can we prepare our patient for the actual process of bronchoscopy. Now, we shall now be taking a very brief look into the actual process of bronchoscopy. I have a video out here which I will be playing for you all. In the video, what you will see are the different stages of the bronchoscopy. Now, what you see on the screen is the pair of lungs which is having the trachea in between. If we move the video farther, we get a very close look of the larynx through which our bronchoscope will enter. What you can see out here coming from the opposite side is the tip of the bronchoscope that is about to enter through the mouth. So see the bronchoscope has approached and finally the light from the bronchoscope is now incident on the mouth. So on the next step you see that the bronchoscope has finally entered into the oral cavity of this person. Once into the oral cavity, what you see that the entire cavity gets illuminated. So we can actually now see the inner organs. If we move the bronchoscope farther, then now we get a image of the other internal organs. See, we have bent 
the flexible cord of this bronchoscope because this itself is a flexible bronchoscopy. Now this bronchoscope is gradually entering the larynx area. We see this larynx area out here and the point of illumination is still present. As we move farther downwards, now what we can see is a central hollow area. Surrounding the central hollow area is the wall of the trachea. We can move even farther down, 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 where these two opposite holes are now visible. This hole represents the entry points of the primary bronchus. So the hole is now separated. It now represents the right principal bronchus and the left principal bronchus opening. So we have entered the, the left lobe. The left lung is now under our bronchoscope. And what you can now see is again the two openings. This time these openings are of the lower bronchi. Lower bronchi means those bronchi which supplies the lobe of the lungs. On the left side we are having the superior as well as the inferior lobe. So there will be two lower bronchi and being two lower bronchi the number of holes are two in number. Now if we move farther past down on the wall of the bronchi we find a swelling, some abnormal appearances consisting of the blood vessels. Now, we need to collect a part of this abnormal growth. For that, bronchoscopes can be very helpful. So, further moving down, we are finding out this particular outgrowth, abnormal outgrowth, through which we will enter another accessory of the bronchoscope. See, we are now very close to this abnormal growth and we have introduced this forcep. This is the forcep which will be applied over this abnormal growth to collect a tissue. See, the tongs of the forceps are now widened. Now this forcep will move farther into the mass. It has already moved and it has collected a part of the tissue of this abnormal growth. It is now leaving this space. The entire bronchoscope would now be retracted back out of the respiratory system. So, uh, that since we have already seen the process in a step-by-step -step fashion, I am now playing this video in a continuous format so that you can see what actually goes on for the process of bronchoscopy. So that was a very short introduction to the process of bronchoscopy. I know that there are many other things that I have not yet discussed. I shall be discussing all those topics in the future classes with me. But before I leave this video with you all, I should be giving you a list of those other topics regarding the bronchoscopy process, which each student must know. These are the list. First is the types of bronchoscopy, then is the description of the instrument that is used for bronchoscopy. The instrument is known as bronchoscope. If we are speaking of instrument, it must have a part. So I have listed as the third number as the parts of a bronchoscope. If you are using a very costly instrument, then you need to take adequate care and maintenance of the instrument. I have listed that in the fourth point. And finally, how would we operate this instrument? That is the manual operation of that instrument. And nothing is complete without history. That is the proverb that goes on. So at the end, I must be mentioning the history of both the process as well as of the instrument. And with that, I complete the lecture out here. Thanks to all of you for watching the videos. 
If you like the videos, do not forget to subscribe this channel in order to get alerts of the other videos regarding bronchoscopy and other medical topics that will be released very soon. If you have any suggestions as well as feedbacks that you want to convey me personally, here is the number in the WhatsApp that I have given you. Do not forget to write your comments in the comment section of this video with that video by and hope to see you soon with the next video either in bronchoscope or on some other medical topic. Thank you. Good day.